Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the February 22nd, 2020, episode of the Walker AC Experience. See, I purposely messed that up because everybody is ranting about the 222, 2222, and all that fun and everything in between. I am your host, Walker AC, and to my friends, and yes, you are my friends, otherwise known as Adrian, of course. We'd like to thank Podbean.com for sponsoring this episode. You can always find us here on WalkerAC76.Podbean.com. That's WalkerAC76.Podbean.com. And, of course, you can find all of the Henry the Fox merchandise under CafePress.com forward slash W-A-C-E. That is CafePress.com forward slash A-C-E. You know, before I get started... Last week's show, it wasn't really my best show. I've said this before in some of my shows. I felt like I kind of phoned that one in. And what I mean by phoning it in, I felt that I kind of did it just to do it. Just to get some content out there. And that was kind of lazy of me. And that show kind of stuck with me for this full week. And I've been thinking about this full week. And I really felt like I cheated you guys out of a fairly decent show because it's been a while since I've done something on my own and I just overthunk it. I overthought what I was going to say, what I was going to talk about and how it was going to relate to you, the fans out there and the listeners to my show, the dedicated people that actually take the time to download this episode or to listen to it the next day or to share with their friends and everything in between. I felt it kind of let you down on that one. So I'm going to try to make it up to you as best as I can today, because once again, I'm on my own today, and I'm trying to get back in the swing of things with that. Ashley Majestic, tremendous show. Sarah Bradley, tremendous show. Everything of the sort and everything in between. So in saying that, I'm going to try to, you know, try to keep it very, very basic, bare bones today, because in my travels, I, 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 I encounter certain people and certain situations and you know most people always say you know adrian we don't think you're happy all the time or we don't we really don't buy the fact that you're this positive person all the time and i have to tell the people all the time yes i am i am this excited person i am this happy person because of the situations and life events that have caused me to be this way and i've always preached about inner peace and finding that inner harmony inside you to where that nothing can interrupt that. You know, not family, not friends, not relationships, not the common stranger or the person that works behind a counter or even you're behind a counter and, and people yell at you and take out their aggressions. To have that inner peace to know that this too shall pass and all the other cliches that follow. And I try to instill that in my young one because, you know, he is... In that, you know, in that, in that middle stage of being a teen and not necessarily being an adult. And you spend so much time on their development and growth as they're young and they get older and they find their own personality. You tend to back away from that. You tend to shy away from getting in their way of discovering who they are and building their personality. And sometimes I figure that I am a good father, but sometimes a lousy parent. And what I mean by that is I've taken the steps as a father from the moment he was born till the moment of age of 18, for an example, to teach him the values and the structure and the discipline and the things to do to when they get to that point that they can figure out on their own by trial and error, by falling a lot, but yet getting back up. And I feel as a parent, 
I felt that I might have dropped the ball on that a little bit. And I'll tell you why. Because in finding who you are in that age where, of course, I'll use that cliche once again, to where kids know everything, we know nothing. You know, we are the old folks and we are the out of touch and everything in between. I keep forgetting to sit down and have conversations about life and what to look for and how to pay attention to certain things and really open his eyes on how to budget money or how to really look at people or how to be aware of your surroundings and what to pay attention to and realize who you are as a person and try not to lose sight of that. Now the perfect person who gave me those values my mom was my mother and she stayed on me until well not until she still stays on me I'm 45 years old and she instilled in me the cliche of stop thinking stop think and speak editing folks is a tremendous thing and I find myself stammering because I'm getting excited talking about this particular topic in my previous shows I talked about my stutter and how It was so bad I can barely speak a sentence. And now as I get older, I get excited. I talk faster. In talking faster, I mumble. Not a whole lot of people can understand what I say or I trip over my words and I stumble. And she's always instilled in me to stop, think, and speak. Also, she instilled in me of be aware of your surroundings. I never understood that until after the age of 18 after I came out of the stupid teen phase. Now, granted, I'm a stupid adult, but that's a whole other topic for a whole other day. The pay attention to your surroundings is focus on where you're at at all times. Be wary of your surroundings. Look around and know who, who's talking to you. Or just pay attention to the little things. Because the more you focus on what's around you and what comfortable you'll be, the more prepared you will be just in case anything goes wrong. Now, of course, that's not to say we should live in fear of doom and gloom, but we should just be aware of the safety zones and where we should go if something goes wrong or that particular person that you're talking to. Everything like that is just make yourself self-aware. And also she installed in me something called what's my problem. Now, what's my problem? It's a simple thing. Now, before I get to the definition, I'll give you a little backstory. In being a teen, and being a stupid teen, I let everything get to me. Now, of course, it happens to everybody. Whether you have something wrong at school, or something wrong at your part-time burger-flipping job, or your girlfriend or boyfriend gets on your last nerve, or the teacher gives you a horrible time trying to do a presentation. You let all that build up and all that get to you and you forget just the basic things about yourself. So I came home upset one day from school and my mother would ask me how was school and I gave the typical basic one word line, fine, of course. Parents never accept that answer. Dig deeper. And so my mom dug deeper and she's like, what's wrong? And after a few minutes of goading, I finally explained to her my whole world was falling apart. My feeble teenage world was falling apart because I had an argument with my girlfriend and I failed my test and I stammered and stuttered through my presentation. My deodorant failed to work and I stunk and everything in between it happened. So as I was feeling sorry for myself and playing chicken little and the whole world is falling. My mother stopped me in mid sentence. She told me to stop think and speak, which at that time irritated me to no end because my stutter was a instant detriment to my life. So I had to take a deep breath. I slowed down and she says, uh, come to the bathroom. I want to show you something. So she guided me by the hand I went to the bathroom and she says, look into the mirror. So I looked in the mirror, my acne written face and my Coke bottle glasses and my seventies Afro. And it was tremendous. And she says, Walker, 
What's your problem? Instantly, I rambled and ranted and anger and rage and spite and bitterness. And she stopped me three minutes into my rant. And she says, no, what's your problem? And I thought for a second, I started ranting again, this time pinpointing particulars. I failed the test and my girlfriend is mad at me because I did something stupid and my friends are mad at me. And, and she says, okay, what's your problem? And after a minute, albeit a few minutes, I didn't get it. And she's like, think about it. You're complaining about other people. You're complaining about situations you can't control. So think about it. What is your problem? And after a few minutes, I thought about it. And I'm like, okay, I, I don't have a problem. She goes, are you sure? I'm like, absolutely. Someone is mad at me. I can't control that. I might have caused it. Who knows? But I can't control that. I had an issue with a friend. I really have no control over that. I might have caused it. Who knows? But certain things that are beyond your control, you shouldn't really get upset about. People will be mad at you. You know, or you may drop something or something may have gone wrong. But it's not my problem. And it's a very relief. It's a very interesting feeling to know when you look in that mirror even at age 45, and you ask yourself, what's my problem? Oh, well, customer yelled at me because something they did, or someone cut you off in traffic, or you had a disagreement with somebody. And then you sit back and he says, what's my problem? And you realize, in the grand scheme of things, you really don't have a problem. Now, that's not a very selfish or narcissistic thing to say. I mean, obviously, if you cause something, you know, it's your responsibility to fix it. But if there's other things that are out of your control, whether it be customer service or just a random person has an issue, it's not your problem. And once, once again, once you have that feeling about you, life would be a little more, a little more easy, a little more simple because you're cutting out the things you can't control in your life. And once you let those go, I believe things will be a whole lot easier. It all goes back to the inner peace that we have. It's the inner peace that we strive for. Very few of us have it. Some may say they have inner peace, but they still let the little things get to us. And that coincides with something I'm trying to teach my little one. You have to find that inner peace. You have to look in that mirror and ask yourself, what's my problem? At 18 years old, everything is your problem. Everything. Because your brain is still developing, your personality is still forming, and it's a forest. It's a forest and you're getting lost in the forest and you have to have that guidance to help get you through it. It's not easy. Not by a long shot. And parents, you know what I'm talking about. It's not easy. But once you get through it, and you try to get on the same page, knowing how much of an idiot you were at age, at age 18, 18, thinking you know everything. Yes, it's definitely a hard struggle. God take the lessons that my mom has taught me. And I try to incorporate that, incorporate that into what I teach my little one. And I still take those lessons and I still bring them to who I am today. What's my problem? Nothing. A job is a job. Life is a life. You have control over people you interact with. You have control over your friends. You have control over your relationships and everything of the sort. Now, me personally, in my opinion, I do well by myself. It has not always been like that. For many, many, many years, I've always had that mindset that something that was taught to us as as young as we can remember, you grow up, you go to school, you go to college, you get a good job, you get married, you have a house, you have the kids and the picket fence. And that's always been instilled in us. And I'm going to make a lot of mistakes as I talk. 
because I'm very passionate about this. And these are my ideals. Maybe yours, but to each his own. We've always been taught to be married, to have children, and to do everything of the sort. Very few of us break away from that, and we find our self-love to the, to the point that we are comfortable with ourselves to where we can sit by ourselves, have dinner, read a book, do a hobby, or even maybe hang out with a person or two. By the end of the evening, we're by ourselves and we're comfortable with that. We don't have the need and the desire to have someone next to us just because. Now, that's not speaking out of term when it comes to love. Obviously, that's a whole other different thing. When you love someone, of course, you want to be around them all the time and everything in between. But I'm talking about being by yourself and actually enjoy being by yourself and not following that norm of that you have to have it. If it's there, of course you accept it, but you don't have to have it. And that's one of the main things, one of the many, many things I'm trying to instill in my little one, of course, you know, being in love is a tremendous thing, but you don't have to be with somebody. You don't have to have that person around you. You don't have to do anything, but having that self-love and that self-peace, that inner peace I keep preaching ever since day one is the most important thing because I believe once you have that inner peace and you love yourself and comfortable enough to be by yourself, you realize what your expectations are. Not what your preferences are, what your expectations are as a human being, as a person. And once those expectations are set, then I believe that still adds on to your peace because you know what you can deal with and you know what you won't deal with. And that's something that I pride myself on doing. It's not an easy, it's not an easy thing. It's a struggle. But I feel once you're there, you're there. The older you get, the more set in your ways of expectations. Now, will they change? Eh, maybe. But, you know, eventually the younger generation will look at our generation and think of us as old and crumudgety and yelling at clouds and being stuck in our ways and everything of the sort, not realizing that when they get to be our age, it's just the way the world turns. It's that circle of life, Elton John song, I'm not going to sing. Back to my original point of my mother just instilling in me all these little values here and there as time goes on. She would say, Walker, you don't have a lot of friends. The only friends you have, you can count on one hand. And being young and stupid, I would say, no, I have 20 friends. I have 30 friends. And it never really hit me until I got older. You realize that the true friends you have, you can count on one hand, maybe two. The kind of friends that you can go for years without speaking to or months without speaking to, you pick up the phone and you pick up right where you left off at, whether it be years or months ago. Those kind of friends, those are friends that if anything happens to you and you need a hand, that they will help you just like you would help them. I have a friend, I have friends on one hand I can count that I'll take a bullet for and vice versa. I've had friends who've helped me out in my darkest time. I've helped them out at their darkest time. Those are the friends that you can count on one hand. Everyone else are associates, which I never knew what an associate was growing up as a kid. All I knew was Nintendo. I digress. And little bitty things here and there. My mother would tell me when you get older, travel as much as you can. If you can travel the world, do so. Get yourself worldly experience. I never understood that. I never understood why she was eager to push me out the door. Because she wanted me to have those life experiences. She wanted me to move and wanted me to go do things. Go to places, take pictures, touch things, experience life. My first trip to Germany, it was scary. But it was exciting. Because a new culture, a new whole way of life opened up my eyes to a whole lot of things. You know, learning German for four years, traveling to Germany, coming back to the States. And the older I got, the more I would travel to Virginia, to Maine, to Utah, to Minnesota, even to Canada to see the Rainbow Bridge and Niagara Falls. Those life experiences 
shaped and molded me who I am to this day. And it's a tremendous thing. It builds stories that I can, I can tell my little one and, and maybe friends and family with life. And once again, she instilled in me all these little bitty things to stop, think, and speak, to be aware of your surroundings, to know who your friends are, to travel the world, to do all these little things that now I'm instilling onto my little one. And hopefully that sticks. And that's the fun and the scary part at the same time. Because you want them to be like you a little bit. But you want them to also experience their own lives and build their own legacies. And you, you're you torn between holding their hands and standing back and letting them fall and letting them fail, letting them make mistakes and letting them experience heartbreak and disappointment and anger and everything in between. It's a strange dichotomy being a parent. But it's one of the most rewarding things in the whole entire world. I feel. And our job is never done. We just want to, you know, have them soak up everything that that we give to them as a sponge. On occasion they do, but when they're 18, kind of goes in when they're one ear and out the other. Because it's great looking at your offspring and you give them your worldly advice and you can tell that they have a blank look on their face and they're just saying yes just to get you to shut up it's a beautiful thing but it's something that we signed up for it's something that we go through and i feel at the end of the day it's okay because we love them unconditional and as being older people we're still learning i know i am and i know i preach and i talk about the things that i've learned the experiences i've been through and that inner peace that I have. And that inner peace came at a price. It came at a very, very bad price. You know, of losing loved ones or the ones you thought you loved. Or losing friends. Or losing family. Because you have to find out who you are. And you'll continue to do so. You will continue to lose a lot of things. A lot of important things or things that you thought that were important. You will lose to find that inner peace. Because like the old cliche goes, it is lonely at the top. But if you have that inner peace and have that happiness inside of you and have that balance, it's not that lonely. Now, am I at the top? Not yet. But I'm close. And I know I can close my eyes at night by myself and realize that today was a good day. No matter what happened to me, no matter if somebody yelled at me or if I was cut off in traffic or... Someone got mad at me that I was close to. I understand at the end of the day, I can close my eyes and I know that I'll feel complete and I'll feel happy. And once again, I'll feel that peace. And I pray that all of you has that inner peace or that is on your way of getting that inner peace. The children that you teach will eventually have that and will eventually have that instilled in them as well. Because, as I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and I'll keep saying it until I can't do this anymore, there is only one you. And you have to take care of that one you. You are what's most important in this world. All your flaws, everything in between. Now, of course, my flaws, of course, I can barely speak a coherent sentence sometimes without stumbling over my words, talking too fast, or not getting to the point. But this is the joy of podcasting. It allows me to speak my mind. Not necessarily preach, not necessarily how to tell you to live your life, but just give you my experiences. And hopefully something along the way that you're listening to, you'll relate to, or you can take with you. Or you can just get a chuckle at and just be entertained. Because, hey, this is why we do this. Not in it for the money, not in it for the fame, not in it to be number one or even in the top 500. My little labor of love is my podcasting. It allows me to be me. Unfiltered, uncensored, and just a piece of me. Not the whole thing. Not yet. I figure if I ever do 
stop podcasting, if I ever retire from podcasting, then I'll give you a big chunk of me because you'll never see my face again. See, a little foreshadowing because you never know what's coming. Before I go, I would like to ask you one thing. How are you doing? Are you treating yourself well? Are you doing something good for yourself? Are you appreciating what's in front of you? Are you happy with what you have, what you're working hard for? And are you at peace with yourself? Peace is a wonderful thing. It's not something that a whole lot of us have. And it's something that we're all striving for in one way or another. And I hope all of you get it. And of course, be sure to reach out to us at slackingmajestically01 at yahoo.com. That's slackingmajestically01 at yahoo.com. Of course, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, everything in between. Go on our YouTube page, search under Walker Space AC. You'll see a thermal cup with the Walker AC Experience logo on it. That's where you can find all of the Henry the Fox animation, old podcast episodes, everything in between. Be sure you tune in to the uh, Root of All Ashley, starring Ashley Majestic. Of course, also Cerberus with Miss Bradley. Um, always, I recommend the One You talk show with Katina Piper. That show is amazing. It's very uplifting and positive. I recommend that too. And of course, all the links down below, everything in between to find us on so many free platforms you can download. And I'll do you a favor. Hey, Alexa, play the Walker AC experience. You're welcome, folks. Until then, we'll see you next week. And maybe I'll have somebody with me to talk about things, to bounce things, you know, to and fro. If not, I may just keep it simple. Keep it, you know, keep it a solo show. We shall see. Until then, happy Tuesday, and I'll see you next Tuesday.